Hello my siblings in Christ, I'm Boyan and today I want to show you a short overview of some of the more notable heresies that have sprung up in Christianity. This will be followed by how I envision the icons of Christ to look like within those teachings. These aren't meant to mock orthodox iconography, they are there to visually emphasize the errors of particular heresies. Gnosticism Well, we are off to a great start. Essentially, Gnosticism is a faith system revolving around the notion that the highest divine principle emanates the lesser ones. One of these is a creator of the material world. Our souls, the divine sparks, are trapped within our bodies by a lesser deity, the Demiurge. Gnosticism is very, very diverse and was freely mixed with different religions, but especially ancient Judaism and nascent Christianity. It is a really, really weird system, but it did exist before Christianity. That is why early Christians could easily identify Gnostic ideas. Docetism Docetism is a subset of Gnostic beliefs based upon the teaching that matter in itself is evil, and that Christ himself couldn't have had a real body. His physical body, they claimed, was a mere illusion, and he never truly died on the cross. Adoptionism Believed that the divinity was granted to Jesus later in his life, generally thought to be at his baptism. Before that, Jesus was simply a virtuous man, becoming the Christ and the Son of God when Saint John baptized him in the Jordan. Sibelianism believed that there is no trinity and that God simply manifests himself as one of the three persons, the Father, the Son or the Holy Spirit, without them being distinct. If you have seen this witty thing, that's Sibelianism, and Christianity has dealt with this joke centuries before it even came into existence. Another name for this heresy is Petropassionism, the teaching that the Father suffered on the cross. Since God is a unified whole, when Christ died, the Father died. Novationism and Donatism These two heresies are very similar, and they both basically revolved around the idea that the Christian life should be very strict, readmission to the church after a lapse should be difficult, baptism should be repeated, lapsed clerics should be reordained or barred from the priesthood entirely, the sacraments offered by sinful priests were invalid, and so on. Their main idea was, however, that the church had no power to absolve sins. Arianism Coming from Alexandria, this is probably the heresy that was the most serious threat to the Church, claiming that the Son was not eternal with the Father and that there was a time when the Son was not. The Son, while divine and far above from an ordinary human, was still a creation, and the same is said of the Holy Spirit. Macedonianism Unlike Arians, Macedonians thought that the Son is co-eternal with the Father, but, like Arians, they denied the same privilege to the Holy Spirit, for Macedonists, the Holy Spirit wasn't a person, he was a creation and action of the Father and the Son. If you ever hear that the Holy Spirit isn't a person, it's a force, or if someone ever refers to him as an it, yes, that's Macedonianism. Apollinarianism In a typical case of orthodoxy going overboard, Apollinarianism teaches that Christ never had a rational mind and a human soul, his divinity serving as both. As an overreaction to Arianism, it essentially taught that Jesus Christ wasn't fully human. Nestorianism Nestorius and his followers stated that the Virgin Mary shouldn't be called Theotokos, she who gave birth to God, but Christotokos, she who gave birth to Christ. The issue was, according to Nestorius, that Mary, being human, couldn't have given birth to a divinity that existed before she did. This made sense on the surface level, but it left us with one awkward question. If the child she gave birth to isn't God, whom did she give birth to? Realizing that this is a thinly veiled Apollinarianism, Nestorianism was quickly condemned. Monophysitism In contrast to the Orthodox teaching that Jesus Christ is one person in two natures, divine and human, Monophysitism teaches that natures in Christ create a new single nature. As with many other heresies, this turns Christ into non-human, and thus incapable to bridge the gap between God and humanity. Iconoclasm In the beginning, iconoclasm had more to do with Christian practice. It considered icons of Christ, the Theotokos and the saints to be idols. Later on, iconoclasts quickly slipped into Nestorianism, claiming that icons of Christ could not be painted as we could never truly depict his divine nature. According to them, the only true icons of Christ were the Eucharist and the cross. Predestination God loves you. God loves you not. God loves you. Thank <laughs> you.